beginning with Robert Bob's radical plan to revamp the Detroit School District. It involves closures that could cause upheaval for thousands of students. And we learned why it's do or die for some schools. Good evening, everyone. We have been pouring over the plan tonight. We have a crawl running at the bottom of the screen showing school closures. A team of Action News reporters are working this story, and we have the highlights for you. The plan from the emergency financial manager calls for the district to stop operating between 32 and 59 buildings. Those schools would either be closed or run by charters. Let's go live to Detroit's west side. Val Clark has been examining what's involved in the process. Val? Joanne and Diana, there are a lot of numbers, classifications, and timelines. But here is the unexpected part. Although DPS will help, it will not, will not be responsible for the transformation that could keep schools like this one open. That will be up to individual charter school operators. 16,000 students will be affected by the Renaissance plan Robert Bob calls revolutionary, necessary, and heartbreaking. Approximately one-third of the district schools need to become charters if they're to survive. And here's his bottom line. The schools identified are those with a combination of low academic performance, low or declining enrollment, high operational costs, Poor physical condition. Holly Magnet is one of 18 schools that must be taken over by a charter operator or close. Another 27 will have an option to become charters, but they must come up with their own, quote, turnaround plan. The battle-weary school board president says it's pointless to continue fighting Robert Bob and the state. A $327 million deficit. So if you do the math and you look at the numbers, the question is, do we continue to close schools here in the city of Detroit to have more vacant uh, and burnout buildings, or do we take a bold step forward? While most on the list are low-performing, Holly is among a few high-achieving schools in jeopardy, simply because of low enrollment. And Bob hopes a charter operator will snatch them up. We're going to canvas the neighborhood. The alumni is going to, we have a strong alumni. We're going to canvas this neighborhood. We're going door to door, speak to the new parents that are in the area, and notify the other people that Halley is still open. And DPS will retain some authority, including oversight. However, all of the financial decisions will be made by those operators. And they, we're told that they could come locally or nationally and that the district has been talking with them. We'll give them some guidance, but eventually it will be in their hands. Reporting live from Detroit's West Side, Val Clark. Back to you, Joanne. It's a lot of schools, Val, though they want charter operators. For what happens if there simply are not enough charter operators to run these schools? or who show interest. You know what, and that is a possibility, uh, Joanne and Robert Bob told me. In that case, though, we have to remember, yes, up to 59 may close, but there will still be 102 schools in Detroit. Back to you. It's a huge story, Val. We'll continue to follow it. Thank you very much, Val Clark, reporting. Diana? Well, Bob's plan could have serious ramifications for union workers in the district. Action News reporter Mary Conway joins us live from the west side. Mary, what's the union saying about this plan? They are very, very worried, Diana, because this affects so many people, perhaps more than a 1,000 of their 4,500 teachers. Dawson is also one of the schools that is slated. It's one of the 18 that if it's not picked up by a charter, it would close, even though 95% of their teachers are considered highly qualified. Mr. Bob said today that their plan is that going forward, the charter schools would be non-union, that they could always organize, but the intent would be that as they would open, they'd be non-union. They could decide to hire the teachers that they already have in the buildings or under the current contract. These teachers would be allowed to bump back. They'd be able to transfer to another school based on seniority. The big question is, what does this new emergency financial manager bill do? The new law, it gives them the possibility of avoiding that contract that really has the union worried. You'll hear from them coming up at 6. Other parents who are very concerned about what happens to these teachers as well. All that much more on Action News at 6.
All right, thank you, Mary. And we have a few more details for you to push for the transform of more districts building the charter schools. Of the district's 141 schools, officials have identified 45 that could become charter schools. Right now, the district has nine charter schools with a total of 2,050 students in those schools. Joanne?